Hi folks, the closest here. Today I'm going to show you another knife in the high-end knife series. This is the Midgard's Mesa um, Little Viking. Now, um, Midgard's Mesa is a is a company uh, based in Germany. Uh, they say they make handmade knives made in Germany. Now I ha I had been led to believe that this that their folding knives were made elsewhere and uh, only their fixed blade knives were made in Germany but the leaflet inside this says they're all handmade in Germany so I'll go with that for now but maybe take that with a pinch of salt that might be um it might not be necessarily correct um anyway they're made by a guy called Dirk Hofmeister who um I've seen him on a couple of videos he's English I think he says his English isn't great Actually, it's better than you'd think, but um, certainly better than my German. Now, it comes in this nice little um, wallet, and this on the front is Velcroed on. It's bad, so you could put that on something else if you wanted to. Inside, um, obviously, we have the knife, but I've taken that out already. There's a little leaflet, which as I say, does say on it quite clearly, handmade knives made in Germany. Um, and then also in there, there was just a little bag. Literally nothing else, no stickers or fancy stuff. Despite the fact this is obviously not a cheap knife, or it wouldn't be in my high end knife series. And this is the knife now, it's called the Little Viking. But do not be fooled, this is not a little knife, it's quite a heavy, chunky body. Just, um, uh, I'll just open it and I'll give you so you can show you some size comparators just to kind of help things along. Now, some people can open this one-handed. I can't, but I think that's more than you know, the usual. It's my hands. They're not great. Um, the obvious comparators for me in my collection are my Medford knives, because they're also fairly chunky. Um, this is the Medford Slim Midi Marauder. Now, obviously, being a slim midi, it's actually relatively thin for a Medford knife. Um, but in terms of length and size, it's pretty much identical to the Midgard's Mesa. It's not as broad as the Mesa, particularly in the blade, um, but it's a similar length. So you can see this knife, although it's called the Mini, is a full-size knife. There's no, um, uh, you know, no getting away from that. This isn't a, a namby-pamby little baby knife. I've got plenty of baby knives. This is a proper full-size, full-handle knife with a very stout, choppy blade. Um, so, let's say in terms of length it's and plan, it's probably similar to the Slim Midi. So I suppose if one had the full... Um, Marauder, the full width Marauder, um, it would be uh, similar. I don't have a full width Marauder. Um, what I do have is a full width on belay. Now, the on belay is a little bit um, longer than the Midgard Smesser. frame a bit better so it's a wee bit longer but in terms of thickness it compares pretty well although the Midgards is actually very slightly the thicker of the two it's lost a little bit because of the chamfers here whereas this isn't chamfered but if you measure the actual width of the handle um, it's at least as thick and the blade is definitely thicker than the on belay. Again, it might be difficult to see from the camera angle, um, but it's very slightly thicker, obviously a little bit shorter. Um, but, you know, when laid down flat, you can see the handles are similar width this way, but the Midgard's blade is bigger. 
Um, I'll just put that out the way. Just one other um, knife I'm going to put in for comparison. And this is just because this is something more people will have. And uh, so it might make a clearer comparison. Is the Benchmade Bug Out. Is the full size Bug Out. So it's a 3.4 inch blade. So this Midgard's Mess is obviously a little bit longer in both dimensions. It's way uh, wider in this dimension. And uh, I'll put that the same way again. <coughs> if I can. And uh, thickness. You know, it's just huge. It's very nice, so that knife. Right, so let's have a look at it. Um, as we're in this view, let's have a look at it this way. We've got some nice ch heavy chimping on this thumb ramp here. You've got really thick stop pin, um, both on the open and the close. You've got um, this really uh, heavyweight backspacer, all in titanium, heavy chimping on both the back and the side, and it has um, Dirk Hofmeister's, or well, just Hofmeister, signature on the back, sp back uh, spacer there, which I think is quite nice. Um, we have a frag pattern on the front, which uh, reminds me of the Monkey's Edge frag pattern, but it's got its own unique little quirks to it. It's got the little Midgard's Mesa badge on here. I actually think to me, that looks like a little sticker that you should be peeling off, but actually, I think it's genuinely painted on. Um, I don't want to scratch it too much and find that it is painted on. Um, but I don't really like that. I think that just it's too fuzzy. The Midgard's Mesa logo on the blade, on the other hand, is nice and simple and clean. And I like that a lot. Um, it's blue anodized titanium. They did a natural titanium version as well. But I believe these are in runs of 250. I don't know if that's 250 of the blue ones and 250 of the natural ones, or just 250. Um, and this one is number 87, which I just bring this up. You might just be able to see that on the blade there. And again, the Midcast Mesa uh, logo. Now, I don't know if it's marked on the blade. But this is made just like my um, Ombilay, funnily enough, of D2. I don't think it's marked. I don't believe it's marked on the blade. D2 tool steel, which I quite like. It is, there is a risk of rusting, but um, uh, I've never really had any trouble with D2 rusting. Uh, I don't live by the sea. Uh, my knife cabinet has lots of silica gel sashes um, stashed in and around it but I had this knife in my pocket in the day that I fell over and it was sitting on a window ledge um, from then until um, last weekend when I got my first two hour pass from the hospital and I came home and I discovered there was a little bit of rusting starting on here and I've cleaned it off and it's fine but that's the first time I've had that problem with DT. The, the reason is it was left on a windowsill in the um, inside my house, but by the window. And I think it was just that the air was just a little bit more um, damp. Um, and uh, as I say, it just started to rust a little bit. I just noticed there's still a couple of little pieces here, which I'll need to clear off. But, you know, we'll do that. Now it came with a razor sharp edge and this sort of tanto. American Tanto style blade with a huge big fuller in it. And I just think this knife looks stunning. Um, it's one I would love to be able to carry. I mean, I know it weighs a ton and you need, um, uh, you know, trousers with a good belt if you're gonna uh, carry a knife like this about with you. But, you know, I'd love to carry this and use it. Um, I probably will use it in the same way that my um, on belay gets used. I mean, this, as I've said before, 
my wife said to me one day, she was out in the garden planting a tree, and she said, have you got a knife that you don't mind getting a bit, um, you know, getting covered in mud? And I had no hesitation in handing her over my own belay. Um, she wanted something chunky that she could use, and as I say, she wasn't worried about it getting covered in mud. So it came back to me, literally covered in mud. But I put it under the tap, gave it a good scrub with a um, little scrubby brush, and um, gave it a nice clean and a little rub down with a little bit of um, uh, WD-40. And it was good as new. And it's that sort of knife, and this is a similar sort of knife. Now, one interesting thing though about this knife that I want to emphasize, and um, I'll do a comparison. You'll be seeing this knife very shortly in the High End Knife series. It kind of, oops, kind of fits into a similar um, category uh, in some ways. I mean, it's it's not the same knife, not by any means. But this knife is made by, uh, was designed by uh, an Israeli um, a knife designer. We'll, we'll come to all that. You'll, you'll get the full full video on it, but it's made in Maniago in Italy by Fox Knives. Uh, I get it's a Damascus and, and titanium. This is D2 in titanium. Um, so it's a wee bit more expensive. But the interesting thing to note with both these knives is that neither of them have a flipper tab, nor do they have thumb studs. Um, and this particularly, though it's a fuller, it's clearly not a a knife opening fuller, or it's not not designed to be um, a one-handed flicking open type knife. Now, there are people that can flick these open, I'm sure, and um, it's probably not even that difficult. And the same with this one, but the original version of this, and certainly the production versions, as opposed to this sort of low production, high-end version, have flipper tabs and, and flip open ball bearing races. So it's obviously designed to be flicked, but I think, well, I know this one is definitely made for the German market, and I suspect that this one is too. In Germany, um, well, you know, in the UK, you're not allowed locking knives, and you're not allowed um, uh, flick knives. Flipper knives are of certainly a questionable legality in the UK. I tend not to carry... Um, a flickable um, flipper knife or something in the UK because it's easy for somebody just to turn around and say, oh, it's a flick knife. And you've then got to argue your way back from that, which can be tricky and it's not worth the effort. So I tend not to carry a fl uh, flicky knife, but I do carry flipper knives rather, but I do carry knives with thumb studs and things like that because, and spider holes because one hand opening is specifically allowed by the act. But in Germany, they have a different sort of set of rules. You know, they've got their own, but the, the, the principal one there is you can have a knife which either is one hand opening or locks, but not both. I can sort of see where they're going there because a knife that you can whip out your pocket, flick open, and then locks open, makes a good quick access weapon whereas if you have to use two hands to open it um that sort of slows you down makes it more difficult to get out in the heat of a moment and uh, become uh, you know become a weapon and sort of slows down but by having you can either have one hand opening or you can lock have a lot knife that locks you can have a lock for security to stop you cutting your fingers off, um, which I think is a good thing. So I don't really like any restrictions, but if you're going to have restrictions, that either all works well. Uh, I know Medford, when they've made knives to ship to Germany, they do them without the fuller. Back to my... Um, slim midi without the fuller so that they're not one hand opening 
uh, because they would, if they didn't do that, they'd have to delete the lock. And well, nobody wants to do that. So if in the UK we had that choice, there are plenty of knives I would then carry, uh, perhaps even the Midgard Spesser. Though I think it's probably too long a blade to carry. We'll come to that um, in the UK. But it would be quite nice to be able to carry a knife that locked, even if it wasn't one hand opening. Or at least it would be good to have the option. We don't. But anyway, I think these knives are made, for, I know this one was made for the German market, and I suspect that the Fox was too. In terms of length, this is not particularly oversized. We've got a, a blade coming in at about three and a half inches, with a cutting edge of three and a quarter inches, um, or thereby, an overall length of, let me just get this straight. Blade, on, I think it's three and a half inches. Overall length, just shy of eight inches. So it's seven and three quarters. Um, but it's in the uh, the other dimensions that this knife kind of stands out. And that blade is is deep. Yeah, an inch and three quarters deep. And when you look at the thickness of it, Doesn't want to stay. Did it a minute ago. Why did you do it a minute ago? And not now. We've got a thickness here of Oh, three quarters of an inch. Blade thickness there, three eighths of an inch. So about eight millimeters. 25, 20, 20 millimeters thick or thereby. This is a chunky, ba chunky boy. Um, and I say, I like it very much, but um, not sure it's uh well, well certainly isn't what i'll be carrying in the uk we do have incidentally on the other side on the, the titanium frame lock so we've got an over travel stock they've got a um steel insert on the lock we have a milled um titanium clip and we have an external cutout i don't like the external uh, relief for the lock bar it just seems to me wrong um, and I don't really like this clip either. Um, the reason I, I have, or the thing I have against it is that it doesn't have enough kind of ramp. No, it doesn't want to sit on its back anymore. It did it a minute ago without any trouble. Yeah, there isn't really enough ramp at the, the beginning of it there to um, get it over your, over your clothes. I think it's just a bit too too tight and I find that that just uh, catches on your on the edge of your pocket and I, it's just too difficult to get on it really needs to be uh, machined so there's a slightly large gap um, but you know overall I mean I do like this knife it's got a really good look to it good feel to it and um, it will be you know, it's a classic, but it's very limited in number, so you probably can't get one even if you want one. So anyway, there we are. The Midgard's Messer Little Viking. If you like this stuff, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this stuff, please remember to subscribe and to ring the bell. Thank you very much. Goodbye.